Greetings. Welcome. My name is Rob Sabre, and this is a presentation about discovering lost test automation fundamentals. This is a bit of a journey, looking at some examples from the past, trying to find some of the fundamental skills related to test automation. And it's not the fault of testers, and it's not the fault of anybody, really. It's just what's evolved. And I'm noticing more and more that the resumes, curriculum vitaes, and job descriptions are just full of lists of tool names and not of the skills related to them. So I'm deeply concerned about it, and I'm trying to hunt down and try to identify what are actually skills. So we're looking here in this presentation at the evolution of software testing fundamentals and the skills related to them. This is the fundamentals of software testing. I pioneered with um, some colleagues a peer workshop called WESTIF, the workshop on the evolution of software testing fundamentals. This started actually in a town in Transylvania, in Romania, not far from the border of Hungary, in a castle re reputedly a resting place or a, a home of uh, the famous Dracula. Uh, we spent several hours there and we were so tired walking around that we basically we sat down and ended up chatting around this well about the evolution of software testing fundamentals and this was in fact the first of what has become an annual tradition to have a peer conference on the subject and what we do is we try to look at projects look at things that have happened in the past to try to find what were the critical success factors what were the tools and methods and then what was the skills that were applied to them Hopefully, we're going to identify skills which can be applied today and which people can learn and focus on. So, uh, the Westif team includes uh, my colleagues uh, Ben Simo and Claudio Stoyanov and myself, of course, Rob Sabarin. So, that's the Westif team. They're my collaborators in research on these things. Today, I'm going to share with you three examples of things that uh, we started to research. Of course, and we're not doing academic research. This isn't any deep, deep, deep dive. But we like to look at uh, evidence and documentation and things that exist today of all projects. Now, testing is not just about software. Testing is about products and product development. And a lot of, of uh, systematic uh, testing as part of the product development process predates uh, computers and predates computer technologies by quite a bit. So the first one I want to share with you today is testing of telegraph lines and testing of telegraph systems. Telegraph systems are systems that were invented in the early 1800s to communicate electronically, peer-to-peer, -peer, uh, across large amounts of land by signals on a wire. They're sending signals using codings like what's famously known as Morse code. Uh, and at the time, they set up a beautiful communication network all over the world eventually, and this became almost what, what was like today is the Internet. In fact, it's often called the Victorian Internet. This is a book by Tom Sandage called The Victorian Internet, which talks about the telegraph system. So you can imagine the complexity of building a telegraph system in the early 1800s. There was no computer technology, very little electrical technology, hardly any electronics. And this is all built up with basically systems where people would signal from one place to another, listen to the dots and dashes, and figure out what the messages were. It was a fascinating system and very effective, and it actually worked well. And part of that, of course, is the success of testing as part of the product development. And this was testing complex telecommunication networks. So one of the best references we see today on this is a document and a series of documents called Testing Telegraph Lines that were set up in India uh, in the late 1870s. And uh, these documentations talk about really what is the theory and method and skills required and actual procedures to follow and methods to follow for testing complex telegraph systems. It's fascinating uh, looking at how people looked at testing on these great systems. And this is, of course, something that was a popular um, means of communications for businesses and people. So the first thing is, uh, I want to talk about, of course, we're talking about automating testing, the, the tools of the trade. 
And in testing telegraph lines, the practitioners were basically taught the basic principles that, as they were understood at the time, of electronics and wiring and computer systems, or not computer systems, but communication systems at the time. And one of the apparatuses that they used to automate the testing of some of this was the Wheatstone Bridge. And the Wheatstone Bridge was basically a method of finding if there were any flaws or weaknesses in the communication system without having to go and do lots and lots of transactions on the system. So this Wheatstone Bridge, which was invented in the early 1800s uh, for the purpose of uh, telegraph systems, was used in testing. And so the reference books on, on testing telegraph lines spend several, literally dozens and dozens of pages describing the theory and basic principles behind tools like the Wheatstone Bridge, but also the tool called the Galvometer that was used in testing the systems and testing the circuits and testing the abilities of the um, telegraph systems. Not, not just the abilities, but the value of it. Uh, the testing methods that were used Base, once the basic principles were clear, was to create models. And they knew that these models were limited. These models were incomplete. These models were good enough to do some valuable work, but they had limitations. All of the testers who were building test environments for telegraph systems had to realize there was going to be a distinction between the actual behavior of the system, the actual operation of the system, and the models they were using, and there was limitations to basically what they could learn from using their automation tools to help test these systems. So they couldn't rely 100% on these tools, but the critical skill was to know what is the limitation, what is what is something that, that we can observe, that we can control, that we cannot observe, that we cannot control, and make sure that we factor that into our work. Uh, it was important to understand the system under test, understand that the tool is influenced by the behavior of the system, but this tool also, the tool also changes the behavior of the system. So test automation tools interact with the system in a way that's inconsistent with reality. And it's very important for people to understand the influence of these tools on the environment. In testing telegraph lines, it was also a critical skill to scrutinize the tests that we, we were doing, to distinguish what we were testing and what we were not testing, to make sure we were aware of what accuracy is and what precision is. Just because we had a lot of de decimal points after the, uh, you know, after the initial number doesn't mean we had more precision. So it's important to know the accuracy and precision, know the variance, right, between what the real system is and the automated system, know what we're observing and how to challenge that. So there's a critical skill in scrutinizing tests. There were two major types of testing that were automated on testing telegraph systems. One they call regular testing, which is testing related to the functionality and the operation of the system. But the other is fault testing, where we would simulate failures and watch how the system behaves. So there's regular testing and fault testing, two types of testing on the systems. And all these tests had names and were well understood and could be described. When you did testing of telegraph systems, it was very important to be able to record and capture great details about what you find. So there's this notion of recording, record keeping, interpreting results, and skills related to that are critical. And it's beautiful stuff that they did in those systems in those days. Let's take a, a jump to a new uh, era here, 1904, the dawn of automated locomotive testing. There was a fantastic conference held in St. Louis, Missouri, in 1904, and it was basically part of what was called the Louisiana Purchase Exposition about locomotive testing and exhibits. That's right, testing of steam locomotives using automation at one of the world's major fairs. And the, the proceedings of this are still around today. This is the copy of the printed proceedings of the conference from 1904. It's fantastic, and it is truly all about testing. They created models of usage of locomotives, some of them actually physically to scale of the system. They built automated tools where you could actually have a steam engine running in place as if it was running on tracks, and they were simulating completely the environment of the system, and they were monitoring the behavior of the system using 
dynamic analysis. They were basically measuring all sorts of aspects of the system, the vibration, the pressure, the temperature, all sorts of characteristics of it. Power. Uh, they looked at non-functional attributes of the system, quality factors, and then they did comparative analysis of this, this train and that train on the same test or the same train on different tests. And the and analytics of that was very critical. Capture the data, collect and tabulate the data, and then analyze the data. Their skills in data analysis, curve fitting, analytics, and the design of experiments so that we can learn about these behaviors. Uh, locomotive testing in 1904 has fantastic visualization of test results. You'll see that they don't just have numbers or pass or fails. They have visualization that shows you things. This is rotation of wheels, for example, measuring uh, things that they called counterbalance testing or torque testing. Um, of course, a beautiful thing from the lessons of the locomotive testing uh, at St. At St. Louis was in, in the literature reference to studying failures. They didn't just study what happened, what worked well. They also studied when something didn't go well, what went wrong. Look at the reject bin to find out what the problems are. That's fascinating stuff in locomotive testing. In the 1920s, people tested telephone systems. They had electromechanic relay systems, and they were tested manually at the beginning. They used manual wired testing. However, by the time the 1930s came around, they created programmable automated test systems for telephone switching networks. One was called the Cardomatic System in 1938, which was later replaced by the Tapomatic System in 1942 from Western Electric. The Tapomatic System had programmable paper tape programs to test switching networks. These were programs that were used to test complex telephone switching network before the dawn of digital computing. They did cost-benefit analysis. What's the comparison of the cost of the same operation done with manual versus automated testing with the tapematic technologies? Cost-benefit analysis. They basically promoted things. There was advertising, and they talked about how many different tapes they had. They had 1,200 different tapes, and how long they were. They could be from one foot to 30 foot long. This was like the size of the programs and the different types of tests. And then they're, of course, marketing claims uh, of testing the time being reduced by as much as 80% and pro uh, possibly eliminating all human error from the testing equation. It's fascinating stuff. Uh, in, in looking at the telephone switching system testing, the key was modeling the system, designing programmatically testing, including strategies to assess correctness. There's fantastic things. You could control all the systems, control the state of the system, and then observe the results. And it's not just passing fails. You observe many things to see, did this pass or fail? So there's a lot of emphasis on test design. And the testers on those products were not just doing uh, finding bugs in commercial release. They were trying to help all of the developers with troubleshooting, and debugging the system. Their goal was to participate in getting the system up and running and operational. In conclusion, there seems to be emphasis in problem solving, experimenting, learning, and sharing information as part of testing in, in all of these historical system testing efforts. Testing, indeed, is a profession that even transcends computers. This is testing of systems that are being made by people to help solve problems. The fundamentals, what, what are important is to understand the theory of operation. What is the theory behind? What is the physics? What is the chemistry? What is the electronics? What is the algorithms that the application is trying to business? What is the business rules? Then the practice, how do people use the system? Model then how the system is used by looking at usage and model both what the system does for the user and what the user does with the system. And dive, dive deep, but remember that whatever your model is, it's going to be different from the reality. And all of these, I find, are fundamentals that seem to be part of these massive and interesting test automation projects. Anyhow, this is a short presentation. I want to thank you very much for your time and your energy jamming with me. I look forward to catching up with you in the future. Please reach out.